Hey Spencer. Hey Alex. Oh, dude, what's what's going on here? We're going fly fishing. With all of that. Yeah, this is what I need, right? No. You don't need all that stuff. You need like 10 pieces of gear. But what we're going to be talking about today is gear. I love talking about gear. Now, you are probably a little bit worried about the cost of gear, right? Well, if you've got a kid, they don't need to go to college, right? If you've got a 401k, empty it out. The stock market's useless anyways, okay? Use it to buy stuff that makes you happy, right? That's what we're here for. No, I'm kidding, all right? Good gear does not have to break the bank or take college away from your kids. In fact, you don't need nearly as much gear to get started with this as you're probably thinking. We've streamlined the gear process to the point we've got a checklist that outlines the 10, 10 pieces of gear that you need to get out on the water and start fishing. This list is linked below. So, what do you need? Well, like I said, there's 10, count them, 10 pieces of gear. Number one is the fly rod. For 95% of anglers, myself included when I started, the best rod for a beginner is a nine foot, five weight, medium to fast action fly rod. This is the rod that can do just about anything. It can throw dries, streamers, and nymphs, right? It is your do-it-all rod. Number two is the reel. Okay, at the end of the day, you don't need to overthink this piece of gear either because most of the time, the reel is just a fancy line holder. The big thing here, don't spend a whole ton of money. Get a decent reel that's got a disc drag. A disc drag reel is just gonna be able to handle a wide variety of fish and fishing situations. That is the key, you want a disc drag reel, and there's no reason to spend 500 bucks on this piece of equipment. All right, number three is your fly line and your backing. For the backing, you wanna make sure that you've got 20 pound Dacron, you want about 100 yards of that on the reel, and then you're going to attach your fly line to that backing. For fly line, you want five weight, because you're getting a five weight fly rod, you want five weight weight forward floating line. This is gonna be abbreviated on fly line boxes as a WF5F, right? That's what you're looking for. The weight forward line is going to cast these rods very effectively. It's kind of your do it all, all purpose fly line. It's what you wanna be buying in this situation. So number four is leaders and tippet. These are really important because this stuff is how you attach your flies to your fly line and your fly rod and get those flies in front of fish, right? You actually can't really fish if you don't have leaders and tippet. What you want leaders wise is you want a good variety of three, four, and five X leaders. And for tippet, you'll need some four X, five X, and six X spools. Saying a leader is three X or four X is just our way, the fly angler's way, of designating how heavy that leader is, so like how much strength it takes to break it, and the size of flies that those leaders are good for. My 3X leaders are gonna be great for fishing streamers. My four and five X leaders, that's the stuff I'm gonna use for nymphs and dry flies. And don't worry, we're gonna go into a ton of detail about leaders and tippet later on in this starter series. Number five is the flies. You can't go fly fishing without flies. Otherwise, you'd just be flies, okay? Super important, really overwhelming. You walk into a fly shop and you see bins of thousands of these little things and you wonder, how do I pick the right one? What do I know to use? This is overwhelming. It's like you're drinking from a fire hose. When we're fly fishing, a big goal of ours is to try and imitate bugs that are on or in the water. So you're gonna need quite a few to imitate the whole spectrum of flies that are out there. We're gonna cover all that later on in the series. What you need to know right now is you just want a good variety of flies that covers most of the bugs that are hatching in the rivers throughout the country. That's why we recommend our fly packs here at VFC. They cover almost any fishing situation you're gonna run into. It's a great base of flies to get yourself started. Number six is the accessories, okay? The word that strikes fear into the heart of every man whose wife tells him that, well, I just need a few more accessories to go with this dress. Next thing you know, you're out a thousand bucks, right? So first on the list of accessories is a pair of nippers and one of these fancy thingies. I think they call this a retractor. They're fun, all right? You need nippers because that's what's gonna cut 
uh, your tip and your leaders make everything look nice and pretty. Next on the list would be your floatant. You got to keep that dry fly of yours right nice and high on the water so that you can see it and so that it looks natural. Floating is a must have, make sure you pick some of this up. Another accessory that you're gonna want is a pair of these thingies. The technical term for them is forceps, right? Where I come from, we just call them pliers, but they're grabbies, all right? They're just gonna grab onto things. This helps get flies out of a fish's mouth, just makes things a lot easier in that regard. Now, when it's time to get down and dirty, you're fishing nymphs, you need some split shot. Help get your nymphs down into the strike zone where the fish are more likely to snag them. Indicators, you might recognize this as a bobber. You can call it whatever you want. When you finally admit defeat, you cannot catch fish on a dry fly. You're gonna need these bad boys to help drift your bugs, your nymphs, down through the hole. Fly anglers call them indicators. You might call them a bobber. It doesn't matter what you call them. You're not fishing dry flies with them, uh, but you still need them. Number seven, you need a net. As fly anglers, we really care about the resource. We wanna do our best to always catch and release fish in the safe and most humane way possible. A big part of that is using a net and make sure you get a rubber or silicone basket, all right? You don't wanna be showing up with those big old cloth fishing nets. They're terrible on the fish and they don't look as good in Instagram pictures either. Number eight, well, it's a purse, but it's for fly anglers, so we're gonna call it a bag, all right? This is what you can put all of your stuff in. All this wonderful stuff right here is gonna fit in it. There's even room for snacks. So you can put a protein bar in there. You could fit a hot dog in there in case you want some questionable meat during your lunch break on the river. Either way, you're not going to want to head to the river without a bag. There's tons of different styles. This is just one option. Number nine, a slick, cool pair of shades. Look like one of them men in black. In all, all seriousness, you do need yourself a good pair of polarized sunglasses. The polarized lenses help you see into the water better. They really cut the glare so you can actually see the fish as they're swimming around in the river. Plus, they have the added benefit of protecting your eyes so you don't go blind by the age of 40. And last but certainly not least, it's real simple. You want yourself a nice pair of form-fitting waders and boots. The river is like a runway, okay? If you don't look good, why are you even there? Okay, but make sure you get them taken in right. You don't want them to accentuate the wrong curves, you know what I'm talking about? You've got, in my case, it's a Mountain Dew and wing gut. You don't want to be showing that off, right? Aside from making you look like a fly angler and you know what you're doing, waders and boots serve a really functional purpose. They keep you dry, they keep you a little bit warmer, and the boots especially help you stay stable while you're walking through the river. Wading through rivers is a skill that's kind of tough to master right at the beginning. You definitely want a good pair of wading boots. Now remember, you don't have to memorize this entire list. We've got a checklist. It's going to be linked somewhere below this video. So go check out that checklist. See, see what I did there? You're checking out a, a checklist. Go take a look at it and get ready for the next video in the Masterclass series.